Committee will please come to order. Today, the Banking Committee will hear from Chairman Greenspan on the uh, very important issue of deposit insurance reform. First, I want to thank Chairman Greenspan, as I've done already, for getting us his testimony in ample time to all the members before this hearing in order to read and evaluate his testimony. These issues are not only important, they're complex, they're difficult, and controversial. And we appreciate your efforts, Mr. Chairman, to get your testimony to us in time for the members. I think as you know, we've discussed it, I have been very much concerned about the deposit insurance funds and the system that has developed so uniquely in our country for years. It was evident to me that the system was vulnerable to abuse and the collapse of FISLIC only confirm the worst of fears. We simply can't wait any longer. We must solve the problems left by a decade of financial excesses, legislative errors, and unprecedented regulatory failures. To this end, I addressed my colleagues the very first day we returned from the August recess on the principles of deposit insurance reform. In addition, I sent today to all of the members a dear colleague letter expanding upon these principles and setting forth the principles for legislative uh, enactment. I plan to introduce legislation today with Mr. Wiley, which would allow the FDIC to increase deposit insurance premiums as much as necessary to keep the fund solvent. Before this Congress adjourns, I will introduce a comprehensive bill on deposit insurance reform. When the 102nd Congress, God willing, convenes. Now let us move immediately to the topic at hand. In the past few days, estimates from the GAO and the CBO about the future losses to the bank insurance fund and about the number of bank failures has gone up once again. In fact, the GAO suggested the possibility of a taxpayer-funded uh, bailout of the bank insurance fund. I believe that was CBO. No one knows what the ultimate cost to American taxpayers will be, but the failure of the FISLIC and the amounting losses evident in the bank insurance fund will be borne by our children and quite possibly our grandchildren as well. This committee and the Congress need to move forward now on deposit insurance reform. We also need to face and fund the losses which now appear evident as a result of past excesses. With that said, we look forward to hearing your testimony, Mr. Chairman, and recognize Mr. Wiley at this point. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and I want to compliment you for the timeliness of these hearings on the reform of the deposit insurance uh, system. <clears throat> we have uh, witnessed the uh, bankruptcy of the Thrift Insurance Fund and recent vulnerabilities in the FDIC, and two days ago the General Accounting Office testified in the Senate that several large bank failures could deplete the bank insurance fund. Uh, we hope uh, that won't happen, but we must be prepared. I am, of course, concerned about the potential weaknesses in the FDIC, and I'm committed to making sure that the taxpayers will never again be asked to bail out a federal insurance fund. Mr. Chairman, you have proposed a plan that would provide for additional assessments for the FDIC, risk-based and premiums, and a limitation on the scope of deposit insurance. I commend you for your efforts. I am also working with uh, Treasury on a reform package to bolster the fund and make sure that we aren't confronted with another crisis, and I'll confer with you on that a little later. I look forward to working with you and other members in crafting reform legislation that will maintain confidence in the system. And while a major reform package uh, for the federal deposit insurance system is probably not possible in the closing days of this Congress. Uh, we do need to look toward that. Uh, nevertheless, if we've learned anything in the saving loan crisis, we learned that Congress must take timely action to preserve confidence in the depository institutions. You mentioned that we are putting in a bill today, and uh, I compliment you for putting that together and uh, allowing me to co-sponsor it with you. Uh, this will remove the cap on uh, annual premiums and will give FDIC the flexibility needed 
to ensure a strong and sound bank insurance fund. Finally, Mr. Chairman, I want to thank Mr. Uh, Chairman Greenspan for appearing here today. I believe that the opinions of the Federal Reserve are crucial to any legislation uh, that uh, will be uh, needed uh, involving changes in our deposit, uh, deposit insurance system, and I look forward to hearing his testimony. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Wiley, and thank you for your kind words. Uh, Mr. Anunzio? Mr. Chairman, I want to congratulate you for calling these hearings today. The state of the bank insurance fund is one that is foremost in many people's minds. Like you, I have been deeply concerned about the state of the fund. For the past two years, I have publicly expressed my concern that the bank insurance fund is under extreme pressure. Last year, the Financial Institution Subcommittee held hearings on the state of bank insurance fund. Witnesses at those hearings sounded warnings that the fund was not adequately reserving for future losses. My continued concern about the bank insurance fund led me to hire three distinguished economists to study the state of the bank insurance fund. In other words, the solvency of the fund. These economists have expressed concern based on past work they have performed about the state of the fund. They were bitterly attacked by the banking industry for voicing their opinions. Tuesday, the General Accounting Office, GAO, released its study on the bank insurance fund. Its conclusion is that the fund is too thinly capitalized and that a recession could exhaust the fund and require a taxpayer bailout. That comes a little surprise to those who have examined the fund closely. Last year, I issued statements in February, March, August, and October, warning of the need for more active bank supervision to avoid losses to the fund. I cited examples in which banks have not been examined for five, six, and seven years. The GAO report supports my conclusion. GAO states, and I quote, we believe that full-scope on-site examinations are the most certain means for regulators to determine the true financial condition of banks. Mr. Chairman, Congress is faced with a choice. We can sit and watch as the bank fund deteriorates or we can act. I believe we must act. Yesterday, I introduced the Bank Account Safety and Soundness Act. This bill will recapitalize the bank insurance fund by requiring all banks to deposit an amount equal to 1% of all their deposits, including their foreign deposits, with the bank insurance fund. This will raise immediately $25 million for the bank insurance fund and will immediately put the fund on a sound basis. Any time the reserves in the fund fell below the 1% level, there would be a call upon all banks to bring the fund back to that level. This would protect the taxpayers from any bailout, since the banks themselves would have to make up the shortage in the fund. I have learned that FDIC Chairman Seidman, in talks with my staff, has unofficially endorsed the legislation. That came as no surprise. In a September 6th letter to you, Mr. Chairman, Chairman Seidman wrote, one approach that appears to merit consideration is one by which banks would be required to invest a portion of their assets in the insurance fund in a manner similar to that used by the credit union insurance system. Mr. Seidman then went on to note the benefits of this approach including making some resources available to the insurance fund. As chairman of the Financial Institution Subcommittee, I plan to move quickly on this legislation. I have scheduled hearings on it on September 26th. September 27th, I plan to mark up the bill quickly. The GAO report points out that the failure of only a couple of large banks could bankrupt the bank insurance fund. We cannot risk playing Russian roulette with the American taxpayers and hope those failures would not occur before the next Congress convenes. We need to recapitalize the bank insurance fund now, not later. And Mr. Chairman, I stand ready to cooperate with you and all the members of the committee to bring this issue to the head and for a, an early solution to the problem if we can, if we can uh, formulate one.